Hi, this is Russ from Studio One Expert. And when we were in London, I mentioned something during the session that I was doing about 32-bit files and how they can save your life. And somebody asked me to make a video to explain that. What we were talking about was that when you bounce stuff out of uh, Studio One, whether that's stems or a mix, you have the option for different bit rates. And you would have seen this before. If you go to uh, Song, Export Mix Down, you will see here, I've got WAV files. Then you have these different resolutions, 8-bit, 16-bit, 24-bit, and 32-bit flow. Now, a lot of people will send them out at 16 and 24-bit and wonder why 32-bit would ever be useful. Let me say from the outset, from what I'm going to say in this video, it's important to understand gain in the first place and try not to clip, and you shouldn't clip. But what 32-bit floating basically allows you to do is should clipping happen is to recover the clipped audio so that the clipping is removed by creating a 32-bit floating point file. Anthony Chapman was there, he's a mastering guy, and he said it was a very good idea to sometimes do that when you're either sending it out to a mastering engineer or you're exporting stems to a friend. Sometimes they'll just clip inadvertently and uh, it's best not to do that in the first place. But if you do get digital clipping, which normally would mean that you can't remove the distortion, then 32-bit float will allow you to do that. Let me explain that. Let me show you in actually in practically in action. So I've got this same audio file. First, I've put it out at 24-bit uh, here, and then I've put it out the same file at 32-bit. And as you can see now, uh, it's a square wave. Uh, the 32-bit here. Now the 32 bit already sounds somewhat better, uh, but if I then come here, if I, what you'd think, well, actually that's clipping. So what I could do, for those of you who are not really into the science of how audio works, then you would think that if you just turn the down, that, that, that clip down, you would now be able to get it, recover the audio. All you let end up doing is getting, getting a quieter version of the clipped audio. So let me put that back again. Then you think, well, okay, let's normalize it. So I'll normalize that now. So I've normalized that audio. And the sun's out, the sky is blue, and all I wanna do It's done it, but there's still distortion there. But here's the 32-bit version, and let me normalize that version, and look what happens. Now I completely thrash the hell out of this when I mix it on purpose to create distorted files. The sky is blue, and all I wanna do is be that way. It's still flatlining because I was putting it through compressors and all sorts of stuff, but so you still got this very flat waveform, but as you can see now. So I've got a, so I end up here with a 16-bit version, which is a quiet, distorted version, or here, the. And then I can, get, of course, get that back into where it should be. And here. You can actually see there, you can see actually on the meters, it's just flatlining. There's no dynamic range because it's been compressed to hell at 24 bit. And here in the, you've got the energy and the dynamic range. So that's what I meant. So if you really want to have a safety net when exporting stems or mixing out your tracks, then do them at 32 bit float. As I say, I'm going to say it one more time. Uh, although I think even saying it one more time will mean that somebody in the comments will make some comment about that you should mix audio right in the first place. I agree, you should mix audio right in the first place, but if you want a safety net, then 32-bit float is the way you can do it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.